And now I'm going to talk about a more advanced feature of uh, GCQ. And I'm using the running example, Hello2. So I'm moving the screen a little bit up. So from line 65 to line 84, and that's the uh, body of the Hello2 query. This time, um, I'm going to introduce the accumulator concept of GCQ. Think about this. When you traverse a graph, you can leave some marks on any node that you encounter. And these marks can be viewed as uh, runtime attributes of the vertices. Then when you encounter these vertices again, you can check this runtime attributes of the vertices and combine them with your no, not, uh, new knowledge uh, since the last time you have seen these vertices and make some uh, more combined uh, runtime decisions. For example, if a person node can have some static attributes describing their age, gender, and the living states, also a GCQ query allow people to uh, add runtime attributes to this person. For example, the simplest one, I can use the Boolean runtime attributes to, to, to mark this vertex, uh, whether I have seen this person node or not. In GCQ, all the runtime attributes uh, are defined by a special uh, built-in types. They are called accumulators. Line 67 and 68 are two accumulators. They got this name because uh, they must implement uh, accumulation operator. And accumulation operator is uh, just a plus equal. See la the example, 70, line 74. So all the accumulator uh, can only um, accept uh, values where the plus equals sign or just assignment uh, equals sign. And the accumulator can either be local or global. So let, let me elaborate on that. A local accumulator uh, is, means once I declare this accumulator, it will reserve a space in every vertex in this topology. So here I use the all accumulator uh, to, uh, to uh, de design a local accumulator. So how do I indicate it's a local accumulator? I put a add symbol prefix uh, before the accumulator uh, name. And this means uh, a Boolean or accumulator uh, is reserved for each vertex. And its initial value is false. And means uh, before my query starts, I never see any, any, any uh, vertex in this topology yet. And the accumulation operator uh, uh, semantics for the all accumulator means I, I, I can keep accumulating Boolean value into this uh, state variable by or operation. And here, another accumulator uh, is called uh, uh, average H and the type is average accumulator. Uh, it's also a built-in type. And this time I put two double uh, add symbol before the accumulator name. So it means a, a global accumulator. In the global memory space, I reserve a, a, a variable uh, space for this average accumulator. And uh, by its name, it means you can keep accumulating uh, float point value into this accumulator, and it always returns the average value that uh, for all the value it has seen. And uh, in Hello2, um, so I will show how to use this accumulator. As before, we start the input parameter uh, P and uh, we assign that to the vertex set start. And then following this uh, query block, I have two more query blocks. And the first query block is uh, getting uh, uh, the first top neighbor of uh, the start starting point. And the second query block getting the second hop uh, uh, vertex set from uh, the input parameter P. And let's inspect the first block. And the first block is select from uh, edge pattern and uh, the edge pattern is start and uh, goes through the friendship edge type and go to person. And then it has uh, a QM class. And what uh, a QM class uh, does is it has uh, implicit parallel semantics in it. Basically, it means for all the edges that match the from class, 
we parallel execute the statements in the QM class for each edge. For example, uh, for a given edge, if I want to mark the source and the target uh, of this edge as visited, means I, I encounter them, this can be expressed by this accumulation statements. So target dot visited equals to true, a uh, plus equals to true, and source uh, dot uh, visited uh, plus equals to true. I can do this sequentially for each as instance matching the from class, or I can put them in the QM class and do them parallelly since they are not uh, interfering uh, each other. After the first hop query block, we already marked all those uh, uh, vertices uh, as visited uh, that related to one hop of the input parameter. We also mark the input parameter as visited. Let's, tr uh, let's try to find the two hop away nodes in the second query block. So the second group pair block, I start from the first neighbor. So that's uh, the compute results for the previous block. And this time I didn't specify the edge type and the target vertex type. And GCQ compiler can intelligently inference from the catalog what vertex type and edge type uh, 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 of can fit this uh, from uh, edge pattern and then fill them in implic implicitly. And this time I also have a where clause to filter those uh, edge type further. So I, I, I filter out the, those edge uh, who has, uh, I have seen their uh, targets. And uh, I also use, just put the alias, uh, uh, colon E and col uh, colon target here to, to refer uh, the position. Yeah, so in the second uh, uh, edge block, and uh, we want to uh, find, discover those uh, two hop away vertices. And also we want to calculate the average age of the two hop neighbors. And this time I cannot use the QM class. You see here, I don't put a QM class. Why? Because there are, th think about this, if I want to uh, compute the average age of my two hop neighbors, there may be some situation. I have two edges that uh, uh, ending with the same target node. If I put them in the QM class, then I will have, I would have uh, calculated the average age for the second hop neighbor twice because I have two edge instances pointing to the same uh, two hop nodes. So the QM class uh, is not uh, right to calculate the average age. GCQ introduced a post QM uh, to address this situation. For each vertex, so post QM is not a parallel anymore, it's a sequential. So who will reach the post QM? And those are the vertices that uh, uh, have uh, three criteria. If you uh, satisfy either uh, one of these criteria, you will uh, have a chance to execute the statement in the post queue. So the first criteria is uh, you, you may have uh, runtime attributes updated in the queue class, then automatically you will be seen in the post queue. The second criteria, uh, you're selected by the select class, then you will automatically be seen in the uh, post queue class or you can directly reference some um, vertices in the post QM class, then of course they will be seen in the post QM class. All these vertices either coming from source or target will be uh, sequentially executed for each statement in the post QM class. And here, since the target is selected and they will be seen by the post QM class uh, after the filter uh, class by the where class, and this target age will be accumulated to the average age sequentially. Yeah, and finally, I print out the two hop neighbors and I print out the, their average age. And let's try to see what's the average age for Tom uh, that are two hop away from Tom. So on the left hand side, uh, okay, I didn't use any graph, so I need to enter a social graph. And then the average two hop age for Tom is 23. And uh, the two hop neighbors is Emily, Kevin, Nancy. Okay, let's try another one. So I want to find the uh, two hop neighbors for Jenny. 
Okay, the average age of two hop neighbor of Jenny is 24, and their name are Kevin and Nancy. Uh, 